Welcome back. Impermanent loss is an often overlooked risk when providing liquidity to an AMM. But it's not rocket science. It's rather simple. Let's dive into it. So in the following example here, we have uh, an ETH DAI pool, right? Uh, there's a liquidity pool. And we do have Alice who can uh, basically add liquidity to this pool. So at the current state, the exchange rate between ETH DAI is 1 to 100 uh, DAI. So she's doing an add liquidity operation. So she's adding 1 Ether and 100 DAI. So in equal proportions. So in total, it's 200 US dollars. So she's owning 10% of the pool. So now at this current state, she's owning 10% uh, as a liquidity provider. Now let's assume that there's now a price change. So the price increase uh, of Ether. So now the new price is one Ether is worth 400 DAI. So Ether um, basically increased a fourfold in, in value uh, here in this particular example, which is obviously an, a significant event. Now, uh, Bob comes and he, he's performing arbitrage, right? Because uh, in, the, in the liquidity pool, uh, the, the, the liquidity was, was rather unbalanced. So he's balancing it out. So now there are like five ether and 2000 die remain in this pool. So, and finally, in the third step, we assume that uh, Alice is now withdrawing her liquidity, right? So she has access to 10% of the pool. 10% of the pool are uh, equivalent to 0 0.5 Ether and 200 DAI, meaning she gets 400 US dollars out of the pool. Initially, she had access to 200 US dollar. Now she has access to 400 US dollar. I mean, there's a realization of an impermanent loss here, right? Because she basically had before, she had one ether and one US dollar, which would now be worth 500 US dollars. So effectively, instead of having 500, she has 400 US dollars only. So this is, this is um, basically Alice who lost uh, potential revenue because the ether price increased uh, a fourth X, but she only made a uh, hundred bucks here in this particular example. Uh, she, she only made 200 bucks in this particular example, but she lost one, 100 US dollars. So this implement loss is really an example of, uh, of just the market dynamics of an automated market pool, market pool. And it's something that everybody can, uh, every liquidity provider can, can be exposed to. Naturally, if you provide uh, assets like DAI or um, USDC, so stablecoin assets here instead of Ether to a pool. So if you have uh, USDC and DAI in this pool, then the likelihood that these will um, diverge significantly is not that big, but it still can happen if, for example, DAI would depack or lose its pack. So an impermanent loss is called impermanent because it's not permanent. So it's only realized when you actually take out your liquidity. So if in the previous example, Alice would have stayed in the pool, this loss would not have materialized. So you can think of uh, the initial position being basically here, right? Uh, if we're here initially, and then there's a price change of the initial price, right? Then uh, you can see that there's a, there's a change in total value, right? Um, so you can, uh, for example, it can go down, right? Or it can go down also this way. So it, it's basically whenever you have two or, or diverging assets in a pool, the imperial, uh, the, the impermanent loss may materialize. So the impermanent loss can result in a total loss of funds. So the trading fees might compensate this, but uh, they may not. And uh, liquidity mining can, can also help potentially. And um, impermanent loss is similar to a DPEG, but I would say it's not as significant um, to, to, a, to, a, to a significant DPEG of a, of a stable coin. So to find potential solutions is not simple. Um, you basically would need to have to change the bonding curve. You remember the curve that governs the AMM uh, liquidity. 
Feel free to also check out various possible uh, implemented loss calculators such that you can anticipate how significant the implemented loss will be for you and for your particular position. So there are some calculators online. Um, I, this is just one example. I don't, I'm not sure if it's the best, so feel free to, to search around yourself. So here you have initial price and you have your future price, and then it can calculate for you the amount of impermanent loss. But please do verify those numbers yourself. So impermanent loss is a danger that exists both in AMMs and therefore also in, in leverage or lending pools. Um, whenever you basically have a pool of assets that you're uh, dealing with. So keep this into, into mind. If you're calculating your risk profile, your risk models, um, nevertheless, uh, stay excited about finding potential solutions to it. If you're a math wizard, maybe uh, think of a new bonding curve. Uh, feel free to propose this in the chat or in the forum. And we are looking forward to hear your suggestions.